Good evening and welcome to Lima Senior High School, where tonight WSM brings you a Division III District Semifinal matchup, the Bluffton Pirates and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. My name is Mark Shine. I've got Scott Mag beside me, and we have a pregame sponsor tonight. Our keys and the pregame are brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this our home. Scott, these two teams played back in December. Interesting matchup. OG won easily. May have some feck in tonight's game. Yeah, uh, but I, a lot of the, that has to do with the keys tonight. Both teams have, are drastically different, right? The uh, Bluffton was kind of trying to find themselves now. I think they figured it out, and they're playing quite well basketball right now. The Pirates come in at 16-8. and eight. Ottawa Glendorf is 20-3. and three. How about keys to the game? Keys to the game first is paint. Paint is the reason because OG scored 48 of 63 points in the paint. Theo Mag led the way with eight, 15 points in the paint. Second is pressure. They turned them over 15 times, and a lot of those turnovers led to run out open baskets for the Titans. So Bluffton has to do a better job of controlling the paint and handling the pressure. OG, on the other hand, it worked the first time. See if it can work the second time. Third is the perimeter. Bluffton has really shot the ball really, really well in the perimeter. So OG has to do a great job of defending the perimeter. And on the flip side of that, Bluffton has to be able to set up shooters and get open shots on the perimeter because that's how they've been winning basketball games of late. Last key is passing. Passing is because when you shoot the ball on the perimeter, right, OG's gonna close out on you, so you have to put the ball on in the catching window. They have to be able to catch it and shoot it because the pressure's coming, so the pass has to be there. And if you look on the flip side, OG has to be able to pass the ball into the paint because I would imagine Lufton's going to send two or three guys to anybody posting up in the paint. That, the four P's to the game, is our keys right there. We got our keys to the basketball game. We're going to have the starting lineups, and we're going to have the opening tip right after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Lima Senior High School. Our opening matchup tonight, the Bluffton Pirates 16 and eight, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans at 20 and three. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. Mark Shine and Scott Mag here for you this evening in this District 3 semifinal matchup. Let's put our officials for tonight on this. Well, let's go through the Pirates first of all. They were 16 and 8, 6 and 2 in conference play in the Northwest Conference, which was won by Spencer, who plays in our next matchup. Here's our starting lineup. Zero is Merrick Donaldson, a six foot sophomore, averaging 14 points a game. Carson Soper, 5'10 senior at 10 points per game and five plus rebounds, four plus assists. Number three is Wade Ginther, six foot junior, averaging 12.7. Number five, Landon Wooster, 5'10", sophomore at six points a game. And 32 is John Paul Yoder. He is a 6'3", junior at five and a half points and just under six rebounds. Tyson McLaughlin's team, they were champions of the Western Buckeye League, 20 and three, nine and zero oh in a conference play for them. And here is their starting lineup this evening. Number three is Grant Schrader, 6'1", junior, averaging 3.9 points per game. Number 11, Theo Mag, 6'7", senior, 12 and a half points and 7.7 .7 rebounds. Number 21, Hunter Stecksholding, 6'2", senior, 8.5 and nearly three rebounds per game. Number 22 is Colin White, 6'6", junior. He averages 20.5 points per game, six boards and four assists. And number 24 is Caden Erford, 6'4", junior, 13.7. He also averages just under four rebounds per game. There's our officiating crew tonight. In the middle, Stephen McRae, Aaron Braun, and Gary Brubaker, our officiating crew for this evening. The Bluffton Pirates average 59.4 points per game. Ottawa Glendorf 67.5. Bluffton got here with wins over Allen East. That was a 78-67 victory that went double overtime. A game which they trailed by 16 heading into the fourth quarter and came back to get it to OT and eventually won it in the second overtime period. An intersectional championship game was against Lima Central Catholic when they outscored the T-Birds 58-42. OG had a bye in the opening round. They went uh, last Friday night and they defeated Elmwood 71-29 with a very balanced scoring evening for them. And we're going through kind of the non-starters right now for both teams. Got a lot of players of the year, a lot of uh, all conference players between this game and the next one. Bluffton had two players who were second team all conference in the NWC. 
Merrick Donaldson, the six foot sophomore who averages 14 a game, and Wade Ginther, who is a six foot junior. He also was second team all conference. And then from the Western Buckeye League, Colin White was player of the year in the conference for the second consecutive year. Also on the first team, Theo Mag. And in the second team was Caden Erford. Scott, while well, we got a moment, pretty big week for Ottawa Glendorf. The Lady Titans are in the regional basketball tournament as well. Absolutely, yeah. There's a, a, a lot of going on at the Ottawa Glendorf High School and the Ottawa OG community. So there'll be a lot of uh, people driving up on, or I guess, least south on 65 from Ottawa to <laughs> Lima in the next couple days here. And that regional is at Elida. And that game will be played on the Thursday evening. The finals then are Saturday, and you, there's a change in the scheduling, I think, for both of those games on Saturday, correct, as far yeah. as time factor? Uh, the boys' game had the finals of uh, the winner of this plays the winner of the next game, and that got moved to 2 o'clock, and then the girls' final will be at 7. So, jump ball time yeah, as we head to the go. center jump circle. John Paul Yoder will jump with Theo Mag. Bluffton in the red uniforms, white and black trim. Ottawa Glendorf, white uniforms. They have blue and gold in their trim for their colors this evening. And Stephen McRae will toss the basketball. District semifinal action, Lima Senior from a nearly full house. Mag tips it into the backcourt. In the hands of Hunter Steckshold, he gets doubled up immediately. Trying to slow him down probably to trap it. And this is Steck Schulte. Down the side goes Theo Mag. He makes a baseline move, gets under the glass. Shot doesn't go, and it's tipped out of bounds by Mag. And it will be Bluffton basketball. The inbounder will be Carson Soper. Look to him to get it inbounds and then try to get it back to him somehow. Look at him in the middle here. This is Ginther with the basketball, and he gives it up to Donaldson. Titans in their traditional man-to-man. -man. Switching, switching all ball yeah, screens. Switching yep. all ball screens out front, aren't they? Yeah. Which allows them to keep pressure on those perimeter shooters. So when they switch off and, and be able to guard them. Yoder's going to set a screen on the perimeter for Wooster. Wooster gets inside and scores the first basket of the game. Landon Wooster. After nearly a minute of action, it's 2-0 Pirates. Steck shoulder comes off a screen. Schrader tries to get to the rim and cannot. This is Colin White. Kind of what everybody's MO here against the Titans is, is nobody really, they play, they play Grant Schrader as the helper. Whoever has him plays in the paint and looks to help for any penetration as White misses. Colin White, and White gets a steal, heads back to the rim, and two hands it. That's what we talked about in the pregame. Passing sometimes an Aaron pass leads to two points or a two point or a dunk on the other end. Tied to two, Bluffton basketball. This is Soper, and he throws it down into the corner. Finds Wooster. There's a pass inside. Yoder trying to back down against White. Little jump hook in the lane. That's a nice little move there by so Yoder to was. back him down and use that kind of hook shot to keep the ball away from White. So he couldn't block it. 6-3 junior goes up and scores his first basket. Erford's in the low post. The ball gets knocked out of bounds, and Caden will maintain possession to be the inbounder. And just like I said, they're using the Grand Schrader who's ever guarding him. He's coming double down as Soper didn't even look to guard him. They went right into the post and doubled it. Let him go on the other way. Three balls, Tech Schulte. Mag tips it to himself, then to Colin White. But Bluffton comes away with the basketball. Headed the other way is Donaldson. Titans get back defensively, though. Deep in the corner goes the basketball to Ginther. He's going to bring it back out top and reset as his coach, Todd Boblet, calls the set. And if you're a, a, a Pirate fan, this is exactly the pace they want. They want to keep the ball, the game in the 40s, keep slow pace, take a minute or so off the clock here. Working to the rim, going up with the right hand, unable to finish inside. Mag rebounds with one hand, gives it to Steck Schulte. Erford from the corner for three. That's our first three-point basket of this evening. Three points are sponsored tonight by Dale's Concrete. And what that made basket is allows the Titans to get into their press, which now Bluffton's got to struggle. They got to get it across. Ooh, almost. They got a timeout. Yep. 
I think Bobo thought the same thing. It was close to a 10-second call. Our Coach timeouts Bobo. tonight are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services. Our break, too. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. While we were away with some technical difficulties, our scoreboard, our instant replay now is sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. While we were away, Bluffton turned the basketball over. And then we have a jump shot that will go to Erford. Erford, thank you. Yes, sir. He's got points four and five, takes the lead up to three for the Titans. Everybody has subbed in the basketball game this. Little runner won't go inside for Ginther, but his team gets the rebound back. Now Donaldson gets a three. Herford soars in to grab the rebound. He's headed to the rim, and we get charge. contact. Yes, He's going to call for a charge. Kind of saw that coming, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, he kind of dipped his shoulder, and good job. I didn't see who stepped in. I think maybe Yoder stepped in there and took a charge. Here's our first sub in the basketball game. He wears number four for Bluffton. His name is Terran Bobbitt. He is a six-foot sophomore. And headed up the sideline. That's two on. Yeah, Erford right now. grabbed his opponent, and he's going to get a quick sub as uh, Levi Underbrink will check into the basketball game. So the leading scorer in the basketball game, Kate Nerford's going to sit down with five points and two fouls. Lob pass deep. Knocked away. Westrick's in the basketball game as well. Schrader tried to go baseline and could not. That was under Brink right there. Here's Colin White's step back jumper. Rebound comes to Soper. Pirates with numbers trying to push the action. This is going to be a three ball by Bobbitt. Yeah, he's too good a shooter to be left that wide open. A lot of times what they like to do with Bluffton is penetrate and hit the trail defender coming in for a wide open three. So Dale's concrete three-point field goal missed by Titans at this end. This will be Steck Schulte for three. That one rimmed out. Rebound comes to Ginther. Bobbitt was in the corner, wanted another look, but they couldn't get it to him. Bobbitt's three-point field goal is 29th of the season. Booster working, that was a backdoor cut. And to the rim and finishing on a well done play is Carson Soper, his first basket. Titans are kind of jumping, trying to keep the ball out of the middle and Bluffton's doing a good job of going baseline and getting all the way to the rim. It's twice that hurt him. He got one on the corner and that one right there. Sexually threw it to the Bluffton bench. He thought he had Underbrink over there. Underbrink had headed baseline. That turnover will give the basketball back to the Pirates with a two-point lead. Ooh, Mag checks in. Grant Schrader comes out. Kind of, this is kind of eerie feeling. The Titans are kind of playing how they started uh, the sectional championship. They kind of just kind of going through the motions, and you know that's kind of how they're starting this game out tonight too. Credit Bluffton for executing the game plan. That time they break the pressure, put the ball into Ginther's hands, and he will run it from the point guard spot. A slip screen to the rim, and Yoder's shot ball came out of his hand. He just lost it trying to go up. Steck shoulder, top of the circle. White gets a three look. Colin White has his first three-point field goal this evening. A Dale's concrete free three-point field goal. Titans up by one. And what that switching allows them is they come and can trap you because they can just jump to the ball. And Bluffton, oh, Coach well, Bobsley got away yeah. the time out there, and the ball was in the air as um, Ginther just turned and whipped it. 152 to go. He took a timeout. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Ours also. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Bluffton has used their second timeout. They did navigate through the press following the timeout. A trail by a point to OG. This is Ginther on top, trying to set their offense up. Good help by Mag, switched out front. And then a little floater in the lane, ball's banged around, Mag rebounds. Mag Ooh. catches the ball at the free throw line, and White tries dives to put on, on the floor. floor and yeah. Can't put on the floor in traffic. He went to the floor as did Ginther. Steck Schulte gets a three look. 
And that hits the support up high before it bounced in, bounced off the red support, won't count. Titans are two of six from threes. I think so they're kind of settling. Kind of, they're kind of settling for that three-point jump a, shot. It looks like they, you know, like I said, they scored 48 of 63 points the first time they played them in the paint. And I know they're sagging and giving up that shot, but you know, I, I just Titans kind of settling a little bit. Not, not that they're bad shots. There's a steal, yeah. Stecksholdy. He's headed to the rim, and Hunter yeah. Stecksholdy finishes inside. His first basket pushes the lead to three. A trap coming. This is Bob on the side. He bounces it off of Mag's leg. Titans are varying the, the presses here. That was kind of a three-quarter court. Give them a different look. Got a lot of young players, a lot of guys with maybe just one year of varsity experience. Got a couple sophomores in them and some juniors that really didn't play much last year because they were a pretty senior-heavy team. That So the Titans give them different looks, getting them to think. Maybe see if he can cause some turnovers. I think in some respects, this Bluffton team's a little ahead of schedule because yeah. they do have so many young players that coaches worked with this year. Bob into the corner. This is Wooster. And Bob it again, coming off a screen. And what do we got? That's a foul on Mag. He's swiped up to the ball. Not a Mag. smart foul. His first foul, team's third. Not had a foul yet committed by the Pirates. That will allow Grant Schrader to return. And they're going to go with a small lineup as Mag checks out. Also in is Brandon Hilty. He wears number 22 for the Pirates, 6'1 sophomore. Twenty seconds to go, opening quarter. This is Hilty who just checked in a moment ago with the basketball. Westrick has him. Donaldson. Boblet. Coach trying to get something going. Boblet into the lane. Has to give it back up. Soper from 15 with a hand in his Tough. face. Trying to shoot back behind him. And Colin White's lengthy throw ends up with a photographer making a nice catch. <laughs> After eight, Titans 12, Pirates 9. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Lima Senior High School. We've had three made three-point field goals in the opening quarter. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Titans with a three-point lead. They have five from Colin White, five from Caden Erford. Four different Pirates have scored. And I think if you're the Bluffton coaching staff, you're quite happy with that first quarter. Down three, and you got the pace of the game. You didn't really turn the ball over that much. Uh, you're playing right with the Titans, and... Booster and Mag going at it. Yeah, scrum for the ball yes, down there. Sir. Finally, Colin White came up with it. Herford's back in the basketball game. He wears number 24. This is Mag inside and going right through, trying to knock the ball loose was John Paul Yoder. That becomes the first foul against a Pirate this evening. We've not had a free throw yet this evening. Our free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Didn't Coach Bob had wanted kind of explanation because yeah. Mag kind of did the same thing right there to cause that turnover. He was wondering what, what, why is that call different? White in the lane from 13. Chases his own rebound down, but instead it comes to Soper. We're going the other way. Here's Boblet. They do like that kick out on the transition. To, uh, they do. They, they get into the paint, and then they got somebody trailing behind. It's really, really difficult to defend that. You run somebody behind you, and they're going to call a foul on Grand Schrader. Yep. Soper was trying to get to the rim, and the fourth team foul and first against Grant Schrader. And, and give Soper credit. He he was kind of prodding, and prodding, and prodding, and prodding in there and trying to get contact, contact until the official finally called something. You know, he's hoping maybe a Titan would get out of position or draw the foul, and he got the foul called on him. Ginther back in the basketball game for Boblet. He just caught the inbounds pass. Pair of number threes matched up out front. He and Schrader. This is Donaldson and White. Soper comes off the screen, works his way to the rim. His left-handed shot won't go. Steck shoulder rebounds. Erford gets a three look that bounces around. It's tipped around a little bit. John Paul Yoder went up for the basketball. Who got called for the foul? Did Yoder jump I, in? I think they might have got Yoder. Looks. 
Yep, 32, Yoder. That'd be his second, right? Yeah, it would. 6'3", Junior. And he will leave the basketball game and be replaced by Taron Boblin, giving up about three inches and some bulk inside as well. Yeah. Lobbed a mag. I think he pushed yes, off. Yes, he didn't did. They're going to call two, or are they going to call? No, I think they got no. on Soper leaning on him. I think, and that's why he pushed off yeah. because Soper would have him wrapped up a bit. But I, you know, Mag could have very well got the foul. He had two arms and he extended. He's got to be smarter than that, especially when he's already got one. He can't be pushing off. And not time we got an offensive foul. Who'd they get? They got. Oh Mag. wow. I was didn't watching. Touch the, him. Yeah, I was that watching off ball. I'm not sure what happened there. He didn't touch the guy on that one, and then uh, the first one was more of a foul than that one was. He whiffed on the screen, actually. Well, he gets, says his second foul and would be replaced by Dave Westrick. Inbound to Wooster, and now back to Donaldson. Pretty ragged pace here in the beginning of quarter number two. Donaldson. But I think if you're the Bluffton fan and the coaching staff, th this is kind of how you have to you have to make the game ugly. You got to make it slow, and you don't want the Titans to get out and scoring and and getting in their press. You want to make it ugly and maybe get frustrated, call some fouls, and keep prodding that yeah. lane, trying to get foul exactly call, get to a foul line. Ginther was headed to the rim, and he drew a foul that will go against Westrick. That's exactly what you want. You want to draw fouls, get to the foul line, slow the game down. There's a web insurance yep. replay. We're about to get some Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Our first free throws of the game. It's Ginther's first point of the evening. He's back to the line. He'll go again. 72% free throw shooter on the season. Westrick went after the rebound, scramble oh, for it. And oh. Bluffton going to get a foul. Yeah, it's like it. somebody hit Westrick on the arm, which is why he lost control. Wooster, I believe. Yeah, Wooster it is. His first. Their fourth team foul. Titans have six. And I think the guy that can't get in foul trouble is going to be Soper. Again, he's got a lot of varsity time. He's been three-year varsity starter. Um, they need that senior to settle him down as Westrick throws the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Threw a high ball, trying to get the ball to a wing. Open shooter on the wing, and just couldn't get it to him. Scared a couple people in the first row. Yeah, man. but again, this is exactly what Bluffton wants. You want to slow the no. game down. You talked get... about passing in our pregame. Yep. Just air one right there. Here's Boblet. Ooh, he got away with the travel, I thought. Wooster and Ginther, and they reset. Titans have not scored in the quarter. Two minutes in, kick out. Boblet's going to get a three. Rims out. Steckshulte rebounds. Steckshulte had 18 in the tournament, went over Elmwood last week to lead OG. Westrick finds a cutting. Erford takes a little contact and then bangs it around. Ends up in Steckshulte's hands. Erford from the corner. Can't get one going to the rim. I'll nail a three ball from the corner. A Dale's concrete three ball. He's got eight points now. Second three. And a double dribble call. Yep. Good call. He comes under Brink into the game. And Westrick will sit down. Titans kind of going small uh, due to uh, the switching all them screens. And basically, they're going five out. It, isn't it interesting to, when you got athletes like White yeah. and Erford, you can go small and be 6'6", six, 6'4"? Six, six, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Schrader gets in the lane. Smart by Grant Schrader. Yes, We're not going to guard you. Take the ball and go hard right to the rim. He's and six score one. the basket. Yep. Yeah. He's six one and scored inside. All of a sudden, the Titans have pushed it up to seven. And that scored him five to one this quarter. Fouled it. Covered up by Underbrink. Oh, almost left yeah, him. Almost left him. That's correct. There's a steal. Steck shoulder heads the other way. And a little Euro step basket. Under Steck shoulder, he's got four. Coach Bob has already used timeouts. I think he'd like to weather the storm. Yeah. And nope, he's going to take a timeout. A Metzger Financial Services timeout with 4.30 to go in the second quarter. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Scott, it's a 7-1 quarter Titans, hence the third time out. Yeah, it, in, 
you kind of mentioned off camera that uh, Coach Bobla talked to us before the game, and he wanted to hang on against the spurts. He knows he's watched plenty of tapes with it against the Titans. They score in bunches, and a lot of times what happens is they score and they get in the press, they get turnovers, and, you know, a two-point lead becomes ten just like that because they get turnovers, and, you know, they're like little piranhas. When one guy gets a steal, the next guy's like, okay, my turn's next. Ginther's going to the rim. He will draw a foul Second before, yeah, Schrader. before, yep. Schrader joins Theo Mag and Caden Erford as having a couple of fouls, but it's also one and one time as we go and shoot those Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. You know, this is this is the MO that they want. They want to get to the foul line. They want OG to, you know, they're getting into him. If you notice, uh, Ginther did a good, jo good job. He got a step, and he didn't allow the OG defender to take his space. He took the OG defender's space and got the foul called on him. Nothing slows down an opposing team's momentum like getting fouled and going to the free throw line. Absolutely. And Westrick not, back in. Not only that, but, you know, give that young man credit that he didn't allow OG Grant Schrader to push him off his line. He basically attacked the basket, made Grant foul him. Westrick's back in. He replaced Schrader with those couple of fouls. Both free throws are made. Ginther has three points in the game, and the timeout has helped stem, stem momentum a little bit. Here's some zone action. Ah, kind of a combo, looks like isn't a it? Yeah. Triangle box in one, maybe. Kind of looks like a tri like a diamond in one. Your face guard Nerford. Moves to the goal and a finish. Underbreak. Levi's first basket of the game. How do you combat that? You attack the rim because there is a lot of holes in that zone. Hilty tried to muscle inside, but. Herford just held his ground. Here's a three that'll go up. That's short and blocked. And then we go down out of bounds off of Hilty, I believe. Nine point lead, 3.42 to go before halftime. That's right there playing Erford. Yeah. Man to man. And the other four playing zone. There's a screen inside, and White gets a dunk. That was well executed. Well, it's against that zone, and then you come down on that. You just screen that bottom guy on that diamond, and, you know, he can't defend, and they sneak White in behind for an easy basket. Good play designed by the OG coaching staff. Bluffton has three free throws in a quarter, but five minutes in, they do not have a field goal yet in quarter two. And they are in need of one right here, trading by 11. There's a deep three. Donaldson from the parking lot, his 74th three-point field goal of the season, a Dales concrete three-point field goal. Here's White from 12 feet. Get the rebounds. Donaldson again. Run some time, run a set as Coach Boblet's going and saying spread. And again, this is what he wants. Get all five guys out of the paint so now you can exploit a mismatch and get to the lane. And unfortunately, they missed yeah. the layup. Worked so hard to get yep. to the rim and then couldn't finish it. Underbrink to the rim again and finishes again. He's got two drives and goal for baskets. And that's how you beat that diamond in one. You got to attack the rim or go hard at the low post guy. Hilty challenges Erford and scores inside. Brandon Hilty's, Branson Hilsey's first basket. Good job by Hilty to understand that Erford's got two. Let's go right at him, make him foul me. Ball's tipped out of bounds by Wooster. Actually, he probably should have just took that one up. So Ryan Ross set to check in for the Titans. And Boblet back in, and looks like Yoder back in for Bluffton. Yoder's got a couple of fouls. Ryan Ross wears number 14. Six guys out there for uh, Bluffton. One of them guys yeah, got to get go. off. Yeah, there we got him. Donaldson off the floor. Eight point lead, OG. 14 minutes into this one. Erford with his quarterbacking skills there to throw that one all the way to Hunter Sexually. Erford and Westrick playing two-man game inside, but they couldn't get it down low. Sexually will back it up. It's traditional man-to-man. -man. Tried to get a back cut to White. That wasn't there. Here's Roth for three. And Yoder go gets, goes actively to get the rebound. He did. 
spread again. Now they got Yoder in the low post, trying to get maybe Occupy White a little bit. Four out, and I heard Coach Boblet say, look, penetrate, penetrate and kick, get a shooter a shot. Yep. Here's that kick out you talked about just a moment ago. They've got Kerry Wright in the basketball game. He wears number four. Titans with a steal. Three ball, Hunter Steckscholdy. It's 28th of the year, another Dale's concrete free, free ball makes an 11 point lead under a minute. Soper works the lane and then couldn't connect with Boblin on the wing. Donaldson back in the game. Couple turnovers. Titans may hold for the last one here. And you're playing slow and you're spreading, you just can't afford to throw the ball away. This is Colin White. Five counts on, he dribbles to break that. And an underbreak. Half a minute to go before halftime. We have a halftime adjustment for you coming up before we get into the second half action tonight. Titans look to score. Obviously, it's going to be White probably putting the ball on the floor, getting to the rim, or Erford coming off some sort of screen here. Colin White's got Soper on him right now. It's this be is a White. They're going to double screen. him up. Yep. Erford goes off from short range and couldn't score, and that will bring the first 16 minutes to an end. The Titans 28, the Pirates 17. Halftime coming up. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. We're back at Lima Senior High School, Division III District Semifinal Matchup. Tonight's halftime adjustment is brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. Mark Shine, Coach Scott Mag, you better keep us some stat numbers. What jumps off off the page at you? Yeah, well, first uh, for the away team, Bluffton Pirates, they were two of five from three, four of 11 from twos, Three of four from the foul line, two offensive rebounds, eight defensive rebounds, and the stat that jumps off, and we talked about this, we talked about passing, we talked about pressure in their pregame. They had nine turnovers, and a few of those turnovers led to breakout oh, uh, game ball, game live turnovers that led to easy baskets for the Titans. They cannot do that. they got to take care of the basketball better this second half. For the Titans, they were four of ten from threes, eight of 16 from twos, did not uh, attempt a foul shot. One offensive rebound, nine defensive rebound, and three turnovers. Some stats that jump out for me for this is one, they were four of 10 for threes. We kind of talked about it on air that the Titans were kind of settling for jump shots. A case in point of that, zero for zero from the foul line. It tells me Titans aren't attacking the glass. They're settling for jumpers. And then when they do get in there, they're eight of 16. Now, part of that is because some of those turnovers led to breakout dunks uh, playing that uh, Diamond and one where Levi Underbrink got to the rim twice. They set up a play for Colin White with a dunk. So three of those eight has been an attack in the glass. Uh, I think the Titans have to get the ball inside. We mentioned it earlier. We said paint is one of our keys. Titans scored 48 of 63 points in the paint tonight. They're kind of uh, settling for jump shots. And uh, give Bluffton credit, though, they're taking that away. So I'm not, you know, kind of blaming the Titans. It's, it's great defense for the Pirates as well. Bluffton quarter scores nine and eight, the Titans 12 and 14. Here's Colin White from the free throw line. Good check out inside, who hit it out of bounds. It will go to Bluffton. Bluffton had seven players score in the opening half, but nobody had more than three points. The Titans had five players score, led by Kate Nerfram with eight, seven apiece, Colin White and Hunter Steckscholdy. And we're in the second half action from Lima Senior. The winner will play the winner of our next game. Spencerville and Liberty Benton, which will air immediately after this one. Nobody picked up a third foul in the opening half. This is Donaldson, but there are uh, four different players with two. Good job by Hunter Stexley coming out there on Donaldson because he's nailed some deep threes already. This is or Wooster in the corner. Taking a couple deep ones, made one, sorry. Wooster working against Schrader. I like Wooster. He puts his head down. He's going hard. Man. He, he's seeking contact in there when he goes. 
That ball was tipped out of bounds. You kind of have to have that, right, Mark? When you go yes. five out, right. you've got to have a guy. If you're going to go, if you're going to go against the Titans, you've got to seek contact. And again, we talked about it. You got to take the space from them as they turn the ball over. They did turn the ball over. Schrader got up a little bit of a hitch in his giddy up. Hope he's okay. This is Erford. And Schrader wants to go to the rim. I think, <laughs> I think that got better in a hurry. Yeah. Now he gets a three look out of the corner. Erford rebounded it and fights back up. Nope. Tipped around and it went out of bounds off of John Paul Yoder. We'll stay with OG. <clears throat> Colin White for three. Splash dead center. Yep. He becomes the first player in the game to be in double figures as he makes a Dale's concrete three-point field goal. Good job by the Titans to set that screen to get him a shot. Yoder kind of had a two-on-one, but he didn't even look. Pushes the lead to 14. Donaldson seeking contact. Here's a three that'll go up at the other end. That one goes for Carson Soper. He's got five in the game. Makes an 11-point game after the Dale's concrete three-point field goal. Coach Bobla doesn't want to tr trade baskets. They need stops and make this game ugly, kind of how they did in the first half as Grant Schrader attacks the rim. Back the other way. Challenging Mag inside. Mag gets a block shot on Wade Ginther. Here comes OG the other way. Erford for three. Tipped out front. Rebound comes to Donaldson. Now head to Ginther. He challenges again. That time he got defended well by Erford and yeah. Steck shoulder gets the ball. Schrader wanted to go baseline, gets cut off that time by Soper. Yeah, and then, you know, that might have been a foul the first half. Kind of letting him play a little bit more, which good. Let the players decide. Good pass. Oh, wonderful pass from Mag, and he put the ball in the hands of Schrader, who draws contact as he scores. Good cross-court pass, cross-the-lane pass from Mag. Yeah, he got double-team coming, and he squared up the basket, seeing a wide-open Schrader, and... Soper's going to get his second. Thanks to Web Insurance for sponsoring our replays this evening. This will be a Lee's Famous Recipe free throw. Goes a little bit hard. Is that the Titans' first free throw of the night? That's, I think absolutely. it is, isn't it? And it sure is. Yeah. Haven't had many for either team no. in the basketball game. It's a 15-point lead, though, for the team wearing the white jerseys right now. That's the guy they want to trap, and they let him out of the corner. Wooster looking for somebody to pass it to. He's got Mag out on the perimeter with him. Here's Donaldson. Not too comfortable with the ball in his left hand. John Paul Yoder trying to work inside. Backs him down, backs him down. He's tried to shoot the ball over Erford. Erford got a hand on it. Yeah, I was thinking he was going to do a spin back there, but he had him set up. He kind of drug him into the paint. If he would have just spun back, he might be able to finish on the right side. That's very difficult to defend as a post player, especially when they're Leaning on you, you get that dribble drag option there. It's a you know, lost start anymore in low post moves. Terran Bobla checked in. He had a three ball in the opening half. The defense that time by Grant Schrader trying to cut off Wade Ginter trying to get to the rim. You know, he did it. He beat him to a spot. Five counts on. Yep. Absorbed him the contact. Ooh, got away with that just he in sure time. Did. Got that bounce pass away. Here's Bobla for three again. Got another one, just like he did in the opening half. He's got six on a Dale's concrete three-point field goal. Erford got sucked in, and then they went off on a flare screen for an easy basket. Schrader for three from the corner on a nice pass from Erford. He's got nine in the game now. He averages just under four. We're going to get a Mexico Financial Services timeout. If you're watching high school basketball on WSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Mexico Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067. Visit MexicoFinancialServices.com. Good job by Bobla to yeah. get in there. Out of the timeout, Bobla gets points number yeah. seven and eight for him. The timeout was called by Ottawa Glandorf. That was yeah. their first time out of the game. Yeah. Well, from what I've seen, I don't think Coach McLaughlin was very happy with the defensive effort. He is happy with Colin White making yeah. another three-point field goal to but give him 13 points in the game. I think he knows that they need to get better on this side of the court, not the offensive end. they got to, like, have some sense of urgency instead of reaching and grabbing. They kind of 
Going through the motion on the defensive end. Brad Schrader just picked up his, his third, third foul, bringing starting Levi to come alive Hunter here too. into the game. Yeah, he's got, uh, what, nine, nine points in the game for a guy who averages just under four. You've seen a lot more of Colin White this year than I have, but there's a steal on the inbounds pass. Oh, Levi Underbrink yeah. tipped that. He <laughs> Hunter was going down for uh, easy but, basketball. Uh, hasn't Colin White's three-point field goal shooting really improved as the season went along? Seems yeah. like he struggled a bit with it in December, early January. Yeah, he puts a lot of time in in the gym and getting shots, shots up, and that is coming along. And, and you know, I, I think that is part of the game that his, uh, he needs to work on and give that young man credit that – he recognized that and, and started to do that and, and try to improve himself there. Soper with the basketball, trying to get away from Underbrink. And he heads to the rim again. Mag tried to get a block because of that. Yoder got a rebound, and Yoder will go up and draw contact. Mag tried to block a shot, leaving Yoder a chance to go get the rebound. Looking to see who the foul was given to. It goes to Underbrink. Underbrink, thank you. Yeah, and Mag just missed it. And Web Insurance replay as yep. we're going to get a couple of Lee's famous recipe free throws by Yoder, who shoots 68% on the season. Third point of the game for him. Good job by him to go get that one yeah. on the replay yes, there. He went and got it and didn't hesitate, right? He went right to his left hand and tried to get the three-point play. Makes both the free throws. That uh, gives him four points on the game tonight. Cuts the lead to 14. Hunter Brink on the arc. And finally finds Hunter Stecksholdy. And Hunter Brink gets a three look. He made another one. They got it going right now from the perimeter. He's got seven in the game. Dale's concrete three-point field goal. And, you know, they, they're kind of using that Grant Schrader mentality with uh, Levi. They're playing the guy in the paint, and, and uh, Levi makes them pay by making out the outside jumpers. I think they've made eight. There's a nice pass that yes. goes into the hands of John Paul Yoder. Really nice assist pass coming across the lane. By Wooster. That's a heck of a drive. There's another three. And they got another one. Hunter break this time. He's got ten in the game now. He came into the game with just six made three-point field goals in the season. He's got a couple tonight, and that one back has to come from Donaldson. And now his coach takes a, a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Break for us, too. You're watching High School Basketball on WSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. That scoreboard shows Ottawa Glandorf with 47, Bluffton with 32. That was the fourth time out of the basketball game by Coach Boblett. Probably making a little bit of adjustment about have to get out and guard Levi. This is Levi Underbrink right here with the basketball. And finally finds Mag, top of the circle. As Yoder didn't want anything to do with him way out there. He's staying right by the rim. That ball stolen, high pass. Soper tries to get to the rim, kick back out. Good job by Wooster to go get that one. And he went right to the rim and goes up over the fence and Mag battles for it. Wooster's in there battling for it. Mag gets away with it. Ball got ripped away by <laughs> yeah. Brad Mag. I didn't realize he'd checked in at the timeout. My mistake is him with the basketball right there. I got it. There's two mags out there. Better yeah. give a go with the first name, huh? <laughs> this is Brad right here. Right here. I That's got that Brad one right. Mag. Yeah, sir. Steck shoulder on the weave action out front. He's got Donaldson guarding him. White goes back cut. Baseline jumper. Oh, nice jump shot. He's got really good form. Yeah. And he elevates so well. Makes it very difficult to defend it. He's got 15 in the game now off a nice... Backdoor cut and pass, 17-point lead. Almost got a steal right there, almost got a second steal. Can't leave Donaldson him. Donaldson stepped Yo, back good job three. By yeah. Instead, three ball came out of the corner by Soper. Mag gets the rebound. That was Theo Mag. He passed it to Brad Mag and then give it to Stecksholdy. I think Coach McLaughlin wants last shot here of the quarter. It's been a good quarter. They put up 20. One. 21 on the board. No, 23 on the board, right? Nope, 21. You're right. 
but Coach McLaughlin's probably not happy. They gave up, they've given up defensively 15. And that's why he called that a timeout. Here's a trap. Ball yep. goes in the corner to Brad Mag. He's going to kick it out to Steck Shoulder. Hunter Steck Shoulder for three. Scramble for the rebound. The quarter comes to an end. Titans 49, Pirates 32. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our instant replay tonight are sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. The Titans rolled out five three-point field goals in the quarter. They stretched the lead to 17 as we head to the fourth. Buckshine and Scott Mag here with you. Taryn Boblett has eight points to lead the Bluffton Pirates, 15 for Colin White, 10 for Levi Underbrick, nine for Grant Schrader. Bluffton basketball, this is Soper. Pass goes inside Boblett. And then Ginther on top. This is Boblett here, the leading scorer with eight. Just as they have throughout the basketball games, Titan switching every screen. Ginther trying to get to the rim and cannot. Soper tried to get to the rim, gets a turnaround jumper that leaves it a little bit short thanks to good defensive pressure from Grant Schrader. Let's see if the Titans take the air out of it a little bit or maybe try to attack a little bit inside. Mag, ball fakes and spins into the lane and goes off glass and finishes. Just his first basket of the evening, but that was well done. Almost, almost traveled, he kind of got his feet tangled up there a little bit. Pushes the lead up to 21 points here for the Titans. They average 67 and a half points per game. Ball will stay with Bluffton. Actually lucky to get a hand on that one if he miss. You know, you gotta, if you go for those, you gotta make sure you get it. Bob way into the backcourt to Wade Ginther. Grant Schrader runs it down with him. Pair of number threes out front. Here they are matched up again. Ginther's going to go off glass, and it's going to count. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wade Ginther has five in the basketball game, and will be looking at an opportunity with .6 as he gets a Lee's famous recipe free throw. And our fourth foul on Grant. I've good defense there, Correct. kind of a little bump. Good job by Gunther. It looked from way up here, I thought it was a continuation, but that was a great call by the official. Was, He's, yeah. That was the right call. Made that free throw. Six points for him. Four of them have come at the free throw line this evening on our ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Colin White. A pair of 22s matched up right now. This is Erford. Turnover and double dribble. Erford had eight in the opening half. He did not score in quarter number three. Well, the scoring came from Grant Schrader, who had yeah. seven in the quarter. Levi Enderberg had six in the quarter. Colin White had eight in the quarter. So that's where the majority of points came from for the Titans. I'll pass way out on top. This is Underbrick. Pulls up from 15. Nice rebound. And Erfer's going to go right back up and score. He went and got that one. He becomes a double-figure scorer with 10. Eighteen point lead. Titans are starting to force their will inside on the paint. Donaldson got inside, but then couldn't do anything because of the height in there. Right. And that time he lost the basketball. Gets it back. Ball fake. Nice shot. That fake. was that really was, well that done. Was nice. Showed the ball. Got the shot block blocker to get off his feet and one, and then tacked it rim. Talented Southmore with yes. eight points a game. Second team all-conference player. Underbrink gets a three off a nice pass and left it short. The rebound came to Hilty. He's going to throw it ahead to Donaldson. This is Boblin in the corner. He ball fakes, pulls up from 17. Ran him off the three-point line. Donaldson gets a three look. And Hilty gets another rebound. Soper for three. And finally, Colin White. Full court bounce pass, Underbrink, another nice bounce pass to Mag. Very unselfish yes. play. Theo Mag has four in the quarter. In a run, you got, you know, 
When a big man runs down the floor, you want him to get you in the ball because him, if, you, if you don't, he might not run next time. But good job, unselfish. You, you're right there that Levi could have shot it, but he gave up. We're going to call a foul on him. Bring. Yep. Blocking foul. His second foul. Team's fourth Couple of the half. Tying faithful or happy thought. He was in it, uh, in there with the spot there. Brett Schrader will check back in. He has nine points and four fouls in the game. Defensive Levi moving his feet. Get their hands off to Boblet as they continue to run their weave action out front. Schrader got a hand on that one and blocked the shot. White rebounds. He throws a nice bounce pass. Erford and Steck shoulder ball fakes. And Bluffton gets back and prevents the easy shot. Coach McLaughlin get it out and get it out, run the play. A little runner by Colin White. He's got 17. He's got 10 of those in the second half. The lead goes to 20. Here's Soper to the rim. Nope, kick out pass to Ginther instead. Ooh, lucky. Almost usually, a steal. Yeah, laid across the middle, usually yeah. leads to a dunk or a layup down at the other end. Erford just missed that one. Donaldson spun into the lane. And Bob Litton, his coach, calls timeout. 3.55 to go in the basketball game. Fifth Buffton Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. We're back at Lima Senior High School. Tight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Bluffton takes their fifth and final timeout. Just under four minutes to go in the basketball game. The pass down inside and a nice, nice back screen. Yep. Yep. Back screen to catch by Soper. Carson's got seven in the game now. White gets another three look. He has been very deadly from out there tonight. That's his fourth one. He's got 20 points in the game. A Dale's concrete three-point field goal. Our ultimate outdoor Ohio scoreboard goes to 60 to 31. There's another three out of the corner. That one will go. Soper again makes him a double-figure scorer with 10. You know, they got to get shots up. They got to, you know, three minutes left. They can't. They can't just keep weaving, weaving, weaving. They got to. Soper becomes the only pirate in double figures with 10. He's made two three-point field goals tonight, giving him 37 on the season. Steck shoulder got cut off trying to get to the rim and didn't force the action. Here's Mag out the center circle. Coach McLaughlin says make him come out and play you. He will hand off to Hunter Steck shoulder. Erford comes off, and gets the basketball. Here's Steck Schulte in the corner, and they bring it back out again. And there's a foul. Nope, they didn't call it. Everybody stopped, and Mag goes to the rim. Didn't score, but was fouled. I think everybody on both teams yeah. thought the foul was going to be called, and it wasn't. Yeah, but then they caught a late, got one. Yeah. Uh, Terran Boblet gets his first foul, and Theo Mag will go to the free throw line. His Lee's famous recipe free throws tonight. He's a 73% free throw shooter on the season. Fifth point for him all in this quarter. Had some foul trouble early on. <laughs> him and about four other guys, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And got a guy's, you know. He's the very active Landon Wooster into the basketball game. He wears number five. Here's Mag again. And his free throw bounces out. The rebound secured by Donaldson. Wade Ginther with the basketball. Boblet. Got to start their offense closer instead of out by. There it is. Boblet gets a three. That bounces long and rebound to Hunter Steckscholde. Under two to go in the game. Aiden Erford. Stolen from him. Soper gives it up to Ginther, who missed a shot under pressure from Steck Schulte. Will go the other way. Playing a little keep away in the corner. This is Erford. 
And then Schrader. And zone action from Bluffton right now. See if they come out and get him. Schrader, mag inside, and a flush. Seven for him in the basketball game off a good assist pass. Yeah, that was very unselfish by Grant Schrader. He could have won in and scored, but dropped it to the big fella, and he dunked it. Moves it to goal and rolls out on him. A tough chance inside for Wooster, and we're going to get a foul. I think that will go to Mag, I think. His third foul, and we're going to get a lot of subs in the basketball game. Looks like we're going to get a Westrick into the game, trying to catch all the. Uh, yeah, Brad Mag. Brad Mag's Ryan, in. Ryan Ross, Levi Underbrink, and Ty Buckland for the there first time. Go. And who's in on the other side? They brought in, they brought number 22 in. That's Brandon, Branson Hilty. Yeah, he's played for, earlier today. For Soper. He's had a heck of a career yes, for has. Bluffton. And that kid, he plays his tail off. And he's getting hugs from the bench because they know that that guy gave everything. I think he's the only senior on the team, I think. Yep. Most of them are freshmen, are uh, sophomores and juniors. So the, it, Bluffton's future is bright here. It really is, yep. A lot got a, young guys that could shoot it a little bit. That's a rebound, Brad Mag. Under a minute to go in this one. We'll be back with our post game, plus our Stolly Hustle Award winner announcement, and then we'll break and come back for the second game this evening. Spencerville and Liberty Benton. Titans playing a little keep away out front. Titans uh, just too much firepower. They made too many shots and second half. Give Bluffton credit. They tried. They kept it close. The game was ugly. The first half, but the Titans made too many shots, and unfortunately for the Pirates, they were unable to do it. But well deserved uh, round of applause from the Bluffton faithful that's on their feet and uh, cheering for these young men because they played their tails off tonight. It will be a 63 42 victory, and Ottawa Glandorf will move to the district finals on Saturday. Post game show coming up after this. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Crowds fouling out after an Ottawa Glandor 63-42 victory over the Bluffton Pirates. Our first order of business is to present our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. And we have voted for a little while. A lot of guys we could have given it to, but a guy who had a kind of a above average and a well-deserved honor tonight will go to Levi Underbrink. Yes, Levi was four of seven and he was two of three. Uh, two of four from three-point land. He was two of three from twos. And, uh, you know, he did two, he did good things both halves, right? When right. they played that diamond and won, kind of Titans kind of were miscombobulated a little bit with that. He drove and got two layups back-to-back -back possessions and got himself his four points there from the two-point range. And then in the third quarter, when uh, they were basically not guarding him, they were using whoever – guarding him was taking away the paint because what we talked about 48 of the 63 points in the first game was scored inside the paint so they were really worried about that Levi says well if you're going to give me this open shot I'm going to knock down two of them and he was two of two in that third quarter and then uh, the Titans got you know made some baskets got uh, the, able to set that press and that's how they like to play the basketball game so Levi great effort tonight and you deserve the Holl Stolly Hustle Award winner Bluffton Pirates will finish the season at 16 and 9. They had quarter scores of 9, 8, 15, and 10. They will end up the season at 16 and 9. Carson Soper will end up his senior career as the leading scorer tonight and the only double figure scorer for Bluffton as he had 10 points this evening. Ottawa Glendorf, quarter scores 12, 14, 23, and 14 for their 63 points. They put three guys in double figures. Colin White had 20, 10 from Levi Underbrink, 10 from Caden Erford. And Grant Schrader just missed. He had nine points for them this evening. And so they will move on, and they will play with a 21-3 record in Saturday's final. I want to thank our crew this evening to put this all together. Wayne Getz and Derek Henry in the truck, our camera people tonight, Jacob O'Neill, Seth Hagemeyer, Marshall Jordan. Thank them for their work. And Kelly Getz back at the station helped put all this together on our live telecast. Once again, Ottawa Glendorf with a 20, with a 63-42 victory over the Bluffton Pirates. You've been watching high school basketball on WSN.